So starting with the homopolysaccharide first. Homopolysaccharide. As we have written that homopolysaccharide is also called as homoglycan. So now let's see the example of homoglycan. The example of homoglycan. The first example is glycogen. Glycogen is an example of homopolysaccharide. Means what? See, when we take our diet, say for example, let's say right now if you have taken your lunch, then what is going to happen in your GI tract is there is a lot of carbohydrate that you have taken. A lot of glucose is there in your GI tract. Now, at that particular moment, that much glucose was not required. So what the body will do is the body will try to conserve the glucose. And the glucose molecules will be clubbed together. The, the glucose, glucose, thousands of glucose molecules will be clubbed together. And a big molecule will be made and that is called as glycogen. Right? So glycogen is a homopolysaccharide because there are more than 10 glucose molecules are there. And because all are glucose, means all the monosaccharide is same. So it is comes under the category of homopolysaccharide. So I can say glycogen is an example of the homopolysaccharide. If they ask that, what is the monosaccharide unit? If they ask that, what is the monosaccharide unit in glycogen the monosaccharide unit is going to be glucose glucose the glucose 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 will be clubbed together and this is how we store over this is how we store over glucose so this glycogen is also referred as animal starch it is also referred as animal starch this is how we save over carbohydrate this is how we save over carbohydrate right that is why it's also called as animal starch now point might be asked that where it is stored, where this extra glucose is going to be stored or where this glycogen is going to be stored. This glycogen, the glycogen or the animal starch is stored in two organs, stored in liver and skeletal muscle. These are the only two places where we can store our glycogen, liver and skeletal muscle. So whenever we take a diet, whatever extra glucose is there, that will be clubbed together, a huge molecule will be formed and that is going to be stored in your liver and in your muscle. So if let's say you do not eat for next 12 hours, then you will not go into hypoglycemia. The reason is because the, the, the glycogen which is stored in your liver and muscle, now it will be broken down. And again, you will get the glucose, it will give you the energy, it will maintain your blood glucose level. So this is the normal routine that is occurring in our body. This is the first example of homopolysaccharide. We will discuss more about glycogen when we will discuss the glycogen metabolism in detail. Then the second molecule or the second homoglycan that we can see is the inulin. Inulin. Inulin, the monosaccharide unit is fructose. Means the fructose, fructose, fructose more than 10 times is going to be inulin. Inulin is used for the GFR estimation. Inulin is used for GFR estimation. Means we want to calculate the glomerular filtration rate. How much the nephrons are filtering every minute. If we want to calculate that, we will use the inulin. Because, because inulin is a part of pre, uh, clearance test. Inulin is a part of clearance test. The, the amount of the inulin is cleared. According to that, we can calculate that what will be the probable GFR will be. So, GFR estimator, what is the name of the GFR estimator? This will be discussed in the physiology again, that is inulin. Then the third one that we can add here is something called as dextran. Dextran. The monosaccharide unit of dextran is glucose. Again, the glucose, glucose, glucose molecule will be clubbed together and you are going to get a big molecule that is called as dextran. Now, then what is the difference between the first glycogen and dextran? If the monosaccharide unit is same, then what is the difference between the glycogen and dextran? See, the difference between these two is in the glycogen, in the glycogen, the direction of bond between the glucose molecule is different compared to the dextran. In the glycogen, it is alpha 1, 4 and alpha 1, 6. I, I am writing the direction of bond also. We will discuss them in detail. Alpha 1, 4 and alpha 1, 6. The direction of bond between the glucose molecule. Whereas in the dextran, it is going to be different. It is going to be alpha 1, 4, alpha 1, 6 and alpha 1, 3. So, the direction is going to be alpha 1, 4, alpha 1, 6 and alpha 1, 3 is also there. So, the direction is different. The direction is different. There will be in between alpha 1, 4, alpha 1, 6 is there and in between there is alpha 1, 3 also. So, direction is different. That is why it is called as, uh, that is why it is a different molecule. 
we do not have to go into that much about direction just keep in mind that the, the direction of bond between the glucose molecule is different that is why it is a separate molecule dextran what is the use dextran is used as plasma expander plasma expander means when you are sitting in the emergency room let's say a road traffic accident patient comes to you and he is in hypoglycemia uh, he is in uh, shock he is in shock his blood pressure is dropping then to increase the volume of the plasma because in hypovolemic shock to increase the volume of plasma we will use the dextran that is going to increase the plasma volume that is going to increase the plasma volume so this is how uh, the dextran works this is uh, the third example that we can add let's say one more example that is cellulose cellulose is also a polysaccharide as a homopolysaccharide the monosaccharide unit is again glucose the direction is different from the from the uh, the glycogen or from the dextran the direction is here it is different we'll not go into direction part here just keep in mind that the the direction between the bonds between the glucose molecule is different so they are the different molecule so these are the examples of the these are the example of the uh, homopolysaccharide that we should know that is the homoglycan now the the next one is the heteropolysaccharide let's see the example of heteropolysaccharide heteropolysaccharide is also referred as heteroglycans heteropolysaccharide is also referred as heteroglycan the only example that we have for heteropolysaccharide the only example that we have for heteropolysaccharide is something called as glucosa amino glycans the only example of heteropolysaccharide that we have is glucosa amino glycans which is also referred as gag gag glucosa amino glycan now what happened was when this gag was first found in the body this gag was first found in the body inside the saliva it was first found in the body in the saliva in the saliva we have a molecule that is called as mucin that is called as mucin so this polysaccharide was first found in the mucin part of the saliva the gag was first found in the mucin part of the saliva and what scientists thought that this gag is basically it is a polysaccharide of the mucin so they have given the other name to gag they said that it is called as mucopolysaccharide mucopolysaccharide but it is a misnomer it is a misnomer that uh, gag is just not found only in the mucin part of the saliva it is present in many other parts of the body also but once the name is given so it is there and there only so what is gag gag is basically a heteropolysaccharide the first unit is going to be different but from the second one the the monosaccharide units are not seen and the second thing is that it is uh, it was first found in the mucin part of the saliva so it is also called as mucopolysaccharide now this is the only example of uh, heteropolysaccharide that we have that is the name with the gag now we need to see the details of gag we we'll see the details of glucosa amino glycans the other name is the mucopolysaccharide now let's come to the composition part as i am saying that the monosaccharide units are not going to be the same they are going to be different so what is the composition of gag when it comes to the composition there is going to be a amino sugar and there is going to be a acidic sugar to make a gag what you need to do is you, you will require amino sugar and then you require the acidic sugar the example of amino sugar i can say is the glucosamine galactosamine we can use any of the amino sugar so you have to take one of the amino sugar then we have to take a acidic sugar the acidic sugar can be for example glucuronic acid it can be iduronic acid so we need to take one of the acidic sugar one of the amino sugar and one of the acidic sugar that we need to take now once we take that if i make the if i make the example of the gag the gag will look like this there will be there will be one amino sugar let's say this is amino sugar then there will be a acidic sugar then again there will be amino sugar then acidic sugar so you can see that the first one is not same with the second one and so on and this is going to be repeated for more than 10 times so there will be more than 10 units 
then such units are going to be there one amino sugar one acidic sugar one amino sugar one acidic sugar right so it is going to be repeated for more than 10 times and it is going to be linked via the glycosidic bond and ultimately you are going to get the gag molecule so this is how the gag will look like this, this is how the gag will look like so if i ask you that what is the charge on the gag molecule what is the charge right because we know that the composition is consisting of acidic sugar acidic sugar acid always have which charge negative charge acid always have the negative charge so i can say it is having a molecule which is having the negative charge so the gag will look like this that it will always have the negative charge on it it will have the negative charge on it so it will look like this there is a negative charge on it so let's write down this point that gag is a negatively charged gag is negatively charged unbranched molecule unbranched molecule now what is the meaning of we understood the meaning of negative charge but what is the meaning of unbranched unbranched means there is going to be a linear sequence it will not be like that haphazardly branched it will not be like that it is going to be a linear sequence only right so this is how the gag will look like now using this two information that is unbranched it is a negatively charged molecule we can derive one property here see if i make a gag molecule let's say this is the gag molecule if i make one more gag molecule one more gag molecule now we know that it, they are going to have the negative charge they are going to have the negative charge here also is the negative charge so these are the two gag molecules are here and what we do is we want to we will try to bring them closer we try to bring them closer so what we do is we apply we apply pressure here we apply pressure on these gag molecules so that we can we are able to bring them closer right but it is not going to happen the reason is because they are having the same charge so what is going to happen is they are going to slip on one another but they will not come near to one another as you are going to give the pressure let's say this is one gag this is another gag because they have the same charge as you try to bring them closer they will slip on one another they will not be able to come near to one another so i can say because gag has because gag have same charge so they tends to repel one another they tends to repel one another they will never come close to one another they will always repel one another the second thing is because they will repel one another so i can say that wherever there will be gag there will be a slippery consistency the reason for that is because the gag will slip on one another they will slip on one another so wherever the gag is present that fluid that uh, structure is going to have a slippery consistency for example the saliva if you take the saliva i told you in the saliva the mucin part contains gag so if you take the saliva and you compress the saliva between your index finger and the thumb you will notice that there is a slippery consistency the reason for that is the gag which are slipping on one another so gag has a slippery consistency gag has a slippery consistency so these are the basic points regarding the gag now i told you that uh, earlier scientists thought that the gag is only present in the mucin part of the saliva so they have given the name of mucopolysaccharide but later on they found that we have different different gags are present in different different parts of the body now depending on the composition we can make different different types of gag right i am i am saying that what i am saying is that you need to take one amino sugar and one acidic sugar to make a gag so you can take any of the amino sugar let's say glucosamine and the acidic sugar let's say glucuronic acid glucosamine glucuronic glucosamine glucuronic glucosamine, glucosamine the next time you change the composition galactosamine with glucuronic galactosamine glucuronic galacto so with different different combination we can make different different types of gag so now we are going to do, uh, see the various types of gag that we have so let's write down the heading is the the types of gag or the examples of the gag so we are going to make a table in the first column we are going to write the we are going to write the name of the gag then we are going to write the name of the amino sugar that which amino sugar is there then we'll talk about the acidic sugar then we'll see the location means where this gag is found and lastly if there is any special point that is there with that particular gag 
so now we are going to discuss that what are the various types of gag right so the first example of gag that we are going to discuss is what is the uh, the first type of gag that we are going to discuss is with the name of hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid the amino sugar is the glucosamine that is with the name of n acetyl glucosamine N-acetyl glucosamine and the acetic sugar is the glucuronic acid. Glucuronic acid. So this is how the hyaluronic acid is made. Now where this hyaluronic acid is found? Hyaluronic acid is found in synovial fluid. It is also there in the bone, cartilage, skin. Yes, it is found in several other places. Now, what is the special point to be remembered? That hyaluronic acid helps in cell migration. Helps in cell migration. I will, I will make, I will understand, I will explain you that how the uh, hyaluronic acid is going to help in the cell migration. We will discuss that in detail. Then it is a rock test, or we can say the mucin clot test. Mucin clot test. Or the rope test is positive for hyaluronic acid. Using clot or the rope test is positive for hyaluronic acid. So let's understand what is the seal migration is. What is the seal migration is? How the so what are the special points to be remembered for hyaluronic acid is hyaluronic acid found in bacteria. It is found in bacteria and it helps in seal migration. It's found in bacteria and helps in seal migration. We'll discuss that how it is done. We'll explain you. The second is the mucin clot test or the ROP test is done to detect the hyaluronic acid. ROP test or the mucin clot test is done to detect the hyaluronic acid. So the points to remember for hyaluronic acid is found in bacteria, it helps in the seal migration. Means what? Means what? If I just give you a rough diagrammatic representation, see here, I will come back to this routine slide, just see here. Uh, what I am saying is, let's say for example, a bacteria or a foreign particle comes to a body, a bacteria comes to a body. Now this bacteria contains hyaluronic acid, the bacteria contains the hyaluronic acid molecule, bacteria contains the hyaluronic acid. So the immune cells, let's say here are the, here is the blood vessel, here is the blood vessel and there are various immune cells which are here maybe the macrophage the neutrophils the the mast cells which are here these are supposed to travel all the way towards this foreign particle the bacteria and will try to kill it now this migration of the cells towards this bacteria helps occurs with the help of occurs with the help of the hyaluronic acid and this process is called a cell migration right these cells are migrating these cells are migrating towards the towards the bacteria and that is occurring with the help of the hyaluronic acid. So that is why I have written this table that it is found in bacteria and helps in the seal migration. Hyaluronic acid helps in the bacteria, found in the bacteria and helps in the seal migration. Let's see the, the second one. The second example is chondroitin sulfate. Chondroitin sulfate. When it comes to the composition of chondroitin sulfate, it is seen the direction of bond is different. Contra means cartilage, so it is found in cartilage, joint, uh, cartilage, the bone, it is going to be there. Because the bones and the cartilage, they are making the maximum weight of the body, so I can say it is the most abundant gag or the most common gag because the maximum amount of the body weight is made by these structures. So it is the most abundant or the most common gag that we have in the body. Coming to the third one, that is heparan sulfate. The composition is seen. Heparan sulfate, it is found in the basement membrane. It is found in the basement membrane. That is found in the kidney, basically. Because uh, in the physiology, you may have discussed that the basement membranes uh, in the glomerulus have small small pores that is small small patches passages are there the size of them is 4 to 8 nanometer right so what happens is they this basement membrane contains heparan sulfate which is a negatively charged molecule 
सो अ नेगेटिवली चार्ज मॉलिक्यूल कैन नॉट पास थ्रू द कोर्स ऑफ द बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन एंड दैट इज वाई द एल्बुमिन डज नॉट कम इन द यूरिन नॉर्मली द रीजन फॉर दैट इज एल्बुमिन इज अ नेगेटिवली चार्ज मॉलिक्यूल बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन इज ऑल्सो नेगेटिवली चार्ज सो एज द एल्बुमिन विल कम इन द ग्लोमिलस इट विल नॉट बी फिल्टर्ड इट विल नॉट बी फिल्टर द रीजन इज बिकॉज द बेसमेंट इज हैविंग नेगेटिव चार्ज so this uh, uh, albumin will be retained in the blood only so heparin sulfate where it is found it is found in the basement the next example is the fourth one is heparin the fourth example is heparin heparin the composition is n acetyl glucosamine is the the amino sugar the acidic sugar is iduronic acid the acidic sugar is iduronic acid iduronic acid Where it is found, it is found in mast cell, and it is the anticoagulant. It is anticoagulant. It is the only intracellular gag. Rest all the gag are extracellular. This is the only one which is inside the cell, and which cell it is inside the mast. Heparin is found inside the mast cell. The next is the keratin sulfate. The composition is it is N acetyl glucosamine. The amino sugar is same. The acidic sugar instead of acidic sugar there is no acidic sugar. We have something called as galactose, and this is the most highly tested point. So what they will ask is which which gag does not have the acidic sugar? Which gag does not have the acidic sugar? The answer will be keratin sulfate. Instead of uh, acidic sugar, what they have is the galactose. They have the galactose. Then. What is the location of the keratin sulfate? Keratin words in the in the Latin keratin words means cornea, so it is found in the cornea. And the special point to be remembered is that there is no acidic sugar, or I can say no uronic acid, no acidic sugar or no uronic acid. This is the point to be remembered that there is no acidic sugar or no uronic acid, no uronic acid. Then the next one is. dermatan sulfate dermatan sulfate the composition is same and it's the glucosamine and the glucuronic acid it is found in skin as the name suggests derma skin is found in skin so these are the few points to be remembered for the the gag part i'm just highlighting the most important where the mcqs form see what they ask is that Which gag helps in the cell migration? This is the first and the most important question they ask from this particular part of the gag table. Which gag help in the cell migration? Hyaluronic acid. Which is the most abundant gag? It is chondroitin sulfate. Which gag does not contain acid? Which gag does not contain acid is the keratin sulfate. This is how this is how you can remember is there is no role of acid inside the eye. There is no role of acid inside the eye. So that is why in the keratin sulfate there is no acid. There is no acid. There is no uronic acid. So these are few points to be remembered for the gag. Now, when it comes to the clinical implication of the gag, what is the clinical implication of gag that we have? Is see, there is one clinical implication that I can add here is something called as there is a condition that is something called as osteoarthritis. Ortho osteoarthritis is a condition that every one of us will face when we will reach in the sixties, seventies. May probably if we will reach sixties, seventy, we will have this osteoarthritis. Maybe of mild variety, maybe of severe variety depends. but it is going to be there so the reason for that is because there is continuous trauma that is occurring to over cartilages which are there in the joint and these cartilages will disrupt one day and the the bones will come into contact of one another and there going to be a friction movement that is going to be there and that will produce the pain that is called as osteoarthritis now what we have noticed that in osteoarthritis if you take the synovial fluid if you take the synovial fluid there is decreased amount of chondroitin sulfate there is decrease amount of chondroitin sulfate and as the severity increases there is increase amount of hyaluronic acid as the severity increases the hyaluronic acid is going to increase and the chondroitin sulfate is going to decrease as the chondroitin sulfate will decrease the cartilage will break down more and the more hyaluronic acid will be formed right so this is this is the picture that you are going to get in a patient of osteoarthritis there is going to be decreased chondroitin sulfate because the cartilage are getting destroyed and there is going to be more hyaluronic acid more hyaluronic acid in the synovial fluid this is one clinical point that we can add here in respect of the the various type of gag then 
the second clinical point that we need to add here is then that is something called as muco polysaccharidosis let's understand what is that muco polysaccharidosis muco polysaccharidosis is basically uh, as the name says that muco polysaccharidosis is basically accumulation of muco polysaccharide accumulation of muco polysaccharide is called as muco polysaccharidosis accumulation of muco polysaccharide is called as muco polysaccharidosis the muco polysaccharide the other name of muco polysaccharide is gag gag is also called as muco polysaccharide so if the gag is getting accumulated inside the body or inside the seal that is called as muco polysaccharidosis now why it happens let's understand the pathology so to understand the pathology if i just give you a diagrammatic representation let's say this is a seal and it is producing continuously it is producing the gag molecules it is continuously producing the gag molecules once the utility of the gag is completed or the gag is abnormal if there is abnormal gag or whatever was the use of gag it is completed this gag is supposed to be destroyed and the destruction of the gag occurs inside the lysosome lysosome is the graveyard lysosome is the graveyard of the gag molecule these gag molecules will be going inside the lysosome and in the lysosome there are several enzymes there are several enzymes that will work on this gag molecule let's say the first enzyme will come and will cut from here and the gag molecule will remain this much long then the next enzyme will come and will cut from here then the gag will molecule will remain this much long and so on this process will go on this process will go on will go on will go on and ultimately the gag will be completely metabolized so there is basically a lot of enzymes are involved in the lysosome that is going to destroy the gag molecule now if i say that the lysosomal enzymes are not working any of the lysosomal enzyme is not working then the gag will not be metabolized one of the intermediate is going to accumulate in the seal say for example say for example let's say this enzyme is not working this particular enzyme is mutation mutated then this molecule is going to accumulate in the body right so if any of the enzyme is not working if any of the enzyme is not working then the gag is the intermediate of the uh, gag metabolism is going to accumulate and that is going to refer as the muco polysaccharidosis so what is muco polysaccharidosis it is accumulation of muco polysaccharide due to due to mutation of any lysosomal enzyme any lysosomal enzyme that is involved in that is involved in gag catabolism so if any enzyme which is involved in gag catabolism and that is not working that is not working then the muco polysaccharide will accumulate and that is called as muco polysaccharidosis so the points to be remembered is that which organelle which organelle is involved in muco polysaccharidosis the answer is going to be lysosome and the where is the mutation it is there in the lysosome so the the when when it comes to the examples of muco polysaccharidosis what are the examples of muco polysaccharidosis we have examples of muco polysaccharidosis the list of muco polysaccharidosis is very long almost 10 diseases almost 10 enzymes are involved inside the lysosome to cut the gag if any of the enzyme is deficit they have given a different name to disease so instead of giving the name they have also given the numbers also say for example if enzyme a is absent they have given a particular name to this disease if the enzyme b is absent they have given a particular name to this disease and so on and so on and so forth so we do not have to remember the entire list we have to remember the important ones starting with the first one that is called as the mps type 1 mps disease type 1 it is also called as hurler disease hurler disease it is due to deficiency of deficiency of iduronidase this due to deficiency of iduronidase it is a autosomal recessive disease and in this disease the cornea is clouded cornea is clouded i will i will make you understand what is the meaning of that why i am writing this cornea is clouded Just write it now. Then we have something called as the MPS two. The name of the disease is the Hunter disease. 
the mucopolysaccharide disease mucopolysaccharidosis type 2 is hunter disease it is due to deficiency of iduronate sulfatase iduronate sulfatase deficiency will lead to this and it is a x link recessive disorder it is a x link recessive disorder and in this disease the cornea is clear cornea is clear so these are the two main mucopolysaccharidosis that we should know hunter and hurler hunter and hurler so what is hunter and what is hurler in both of them ultimately one of the intermediate of the gag catabolism is going to accumulate the enzyme names are the iduronidase deficiency will lead to hurler and iduronate sulfatase deficiency will lead to hunter right so how to remember that in the exam and uh, you must have seen uh, we can say a game or you may have played also in that what we have to do is there is a cardboard and we have multiple darts with us multiple darts are there you need to throw the dart and you will try to hit the center in the center what is written is x right that is the bullseye if you hit the x if you hit the x means you are able to hit the x then you will be called as hunter then you will be called as hunter my question is see hunter always try to hit the x hunter hunter try, always try to hit the x my point is if you want to be a hunter your eye has to be normal yes you are the prerequisite is your eye has to be clear your cornea has to be clear it has to be normal right hunter always aim for x and for that the eye has to be clear see hunter always aim for x and the cornea is clear the cornea is clear the opposite is hurler the opposite is hurler hurler is autosomal recessive and cornea is not clear so you just remember for hunter the automatically you will remember for hurler that is opposite for the hunter so hunter always aim for x and the cornea is clear the opposite is for the hurler that is true so this is the mucopolysaccharidosis that the gag if it is getting accumulated there are several enzymes involved if any of the enzyme is absent they have given a different name to this disease we are not going into detail there are many other diseases the san filippo in the san filippo there are again four subtypes then there is sky disease the sky line disease we are not going to detail in that that is not important that is not relevant what is important is the hurler and hunter hurler and hunter that is the type 1 and type 2 now so this is the second thing that we should know regarding the gag this is the second thing that we should know regarding the gag now earlier we have discussed that that this is all about mucopolysaccharidosis earlier we have discussed that we know that the oligosaccharide usually does not found free in the body does not found free in the body what they do is they may unite with protein or they may unite with lipid if they unite with protein this is called as glycoprotein this is what we have written earlier when we have discussed about the oligosaccharide part in the same way now what i am saying is that the glycans are not found free in the body many times glycans are not found free one of the example of glycan i can say is the gag glycans means what glycans means the polysaccharide one of the example of polysaccharide is gag so gag is not found many times free in the body and it may unite with protein may unite with protein if the gag unites with protein this is called as because gag is a glycan so it is called as proteoglycan it's called as proteoglycan so these two terms looks very similar glycoprotein and proteoglycan glycoprotein is what oligosaccharide plus protein what is proteoglycan proteoglycan is protein plus gag protein plus gag is proteoglycan so if i make the structure of proteoglycan if i make the structure of proteoglycan so the structure of proteoglycan will look like this in the center we are going to have a protein stick let's say this black color one is the the protein molecule this is the protein molecule and on that protein molecule we are going to have these gag molecules because gag is a unbranched linear molecule we have made the diagram gag is unbranched linear molecule having negative charge so the gag will look like this so gag with the protein this is this is referred as the proteoglycan this is the molecule proteoglycan now looking at this structure of proteoglycan it is looking like what this proteoglycan is looking like what this is called as the bottle brush shape this is called as bottle brush shape this is the bottle brush shape right now if we compare the 
glycoprotein and the proteoglycan if we compare these two molecules you just have to remember about proteoglycan the opposite is true for glycoprotein if i compare these two uh, you the structure of proteoglycan is in front of you if i ask you that who is making the more surface area or who is making the more proportion is it the protein or the gag the answer is going to be gag so gag is a carbohydrate so i can say in proteoglycan more than 95% is carbohydrate gag is a carbohydrate so it's more than 95% is carbohydrate and gag is unbranched molecule so proteoglycan is unbranched it is a unbranched molecule the opposite is true for glycoprotein glycoprotein is less than 5% carbohydrate and it is a branched molecule it is a branched molecule so you just know about the proteoglycan the opposite is also true for the glycoprotein this is how it is to be done this is how it is to be done so to summarize what i can say is we were discussing the classification of protein uh, class so to summarize uh, what i can say is we were discussing the classification of carbohydrate and in the carbohydrate we have discussed about the monosaccharide in the monosaccharide we have discussed about the triose tetose pentose and hexose then we have discussed about the disaccharide disaccharide can be further divided into reducing or the non reducing depending whether the functional group is there or not there the example of non reducing is important for us to remember and that is sucrose there are two examples sucrose and trehalose but the important to be remembered is the sucrose then we have discussed about the oligosaccharide oligosaccharide i told you that not found in the body either they will make the glycoprotein or they will make the glycolipid then we have discussed the last category that was the polysaccharide polysaccharide can be homo or hetero the example of hetero that we have discussed was gag and the various types of gag and the various types of mucopolysaccharidosis and the clinical correlations that we have discussed right so this is the classification of carbohydrates very important to understand the further metabolism part of the carbohydrate right thank you guys